Alright guys, back again with the uh, passing part 2. Hope you guys enjoyed part 1, because I sure enjo uh, enjoyed making it for you guys. Um, even after uh, making these videos, I've learned a lot more since then, and uh, I'm willing to, and I'm excited to actually show, the, show it to you guys. Um, but let's uh, finish up with this video. Alright, let's get into it. Alright, uh, right where we left off. Uh, this is probably one of the um, most boring parts of the actual video just because it's a lot of detailing, a lot of going in and out. Um, but hopefully you guys can take a good look and see how, how I start detailing some of my stuff. Um, when creating this video, the passing actually, um, you know, I just wanted a, a quick way to work on my coloring, you know, so I decided to, uh, you know, do something like this. Uh, it doesn't have the best composition possible, but, you know, it, it works for what I was trying to achieve, and, you know, I, I was generally happy with it. Again, going through the water. You know, trying to find like the best colors, trying to give a sense of depth. Um, one way to do depth is birds. <laughs> I like drawing birds. Um, another way is to add like really far in the distance objects that would probably be like human size, but making them really small in the background. And I'm going in, working on this brighter area of the clouds, trying to bring them out a little bit more. Chalk brush is a fantastic uh, tool, or actually brush that the Photoshop has. It just gives so much texture, and it's very fun to work with. It's probably, yeah, like I said, it's probably my favorite brush. <laughs> um, another thing is good, that's good though is to actually create your own brushes. Actually, uh, after this video, I've created a couple brushes that I like to use now. A lot of good texture brushes out there. So, um. Yeah, go ahead and start experimenting with uh, creating brushes of your own. Um, if you guys don't know how to make any brushes, I will actually make a tutorial on that. Pretty quick one. It's really easy. And you can get a lot of good results from it. Uh, it saves you a lot of time searching around the internet for like the right brush that you want. You can just make whatever you want. So, if you guys really want a tutorial on that, I can do that for you. Um, so I'm going in with these rocks, um, trying to get a sense of depth on the rocks or the scale of the actual building. All right, here goes this uh, tree brush again. This one I didn't create; uh, I actually found it online. I can't remember what site it was, but I mean, there's there's a lot of good tree brushes out there. I actually have a whole set of tree brushes that save me a lot of time. There was another one that I'm using. Save just a lot of time. Um, I got these brushes before I actually created, uh, created brushes. So, but they work like a charm. If you have a specific brush that you want to get, like trees, for example, yeah, go out and search for it. Um. For another note though, while I'm detailing these rocks, um, I generally do these videos as a video blog for uh, myself and others to see, you know, just to see, just to track my progress, the way, how my art has improved over time, you know, and I like sharing it with everybody, and, you know, I like to see what people have to say, different people's inputs, you know, I'm always trying to get better, and this is one thing that I always do with just about anything, um, I like to keep track of my progress and you know this is a really good way to do it and YouTube has like such a great fan base where you just put stuff up and you know anybody can look at it okay I'm going in again with this tree brush I'm pretty sure this time I have the brush on color um, under the brush preferences if you uh, change it to color you can get a wide assortment of different colors when you paint with the brush uh, as you can see right here I did not like how those mounds looked on the side 
I kind of mentioned it in the first video that uh, they just weren't working. The perspective was off, and it just felt a little bit wonky on the side. So um, I'm here trying to fix it, trying to play with it a little bit on the side, seeing if I can try to salvage some of this um, these rocks. I like how they look. I really like how the rocks look, but um, you know, some things in a piece you might have to sacrifice if it just doesn't work. So. Um, what I'm going to try to do is salvage this a little bit, see if it might work, see if it could fit. So I'm going to go back to those in a little bit. Still playing with the, the sky, playing with this uh, beak rock thing right here. kind of like the beak right there because it kind of leads the eye to a certain point I'm gonna have something on that ledge and the beat kinda points to what's gonna be on that ledge so it's a cool way to direct the eye alright so uh... <laughs> don't mind about that that pops up uh, it's a little bit of a uh, League of Legends in there. You might actually see it pop up again. So, yep, there it goes. I was actually uh, getting in the game of League of Legends <laughs> while recording this too. So, all right, there goes a tr another trick that I like to do. I felt like the composition was pushed up a little too far. So what I do is flatten the whole image, um, use the, the arrow tool, pull the image down a little bit, and that little piece, and a little piece of the top, you kind of uh, use the marquee tool, select it, and free transform it up, and it pulls that top part of the image up, and you can just paint on top of it. It's just a quick way to move everything down without having to do a lot of other stuff on top of that and as you see I did not like the close line on the side I think it's giving me like this weird tangent with the building it's too much going on on that one little side and it's just not working right now for me so you know I gave it a little erase and probably gonna end up going back to it Here's me again trying to see what I can do. Maybe add a coastline on the side. Eh, see, I'm not feeling it at all, so I decided to take that out. Alright, so I decided to go add in a little bit of background uh, land. I think this uh, best balances out the image. And you know, add in some atmospheric fog too to it, so yeah, it, it balances out the image a lot better. Okay, now I'm actually going in to add some shadows under these rocks. Now this is um the part where I rest my mind a little bit and just adding some more details. good right now I kinda have all the colors that I need in the image so what I'm doing is color picking going in detailing color picking going in detailing um on the fact of since I started this in color um I mean sometimes it's good to go into color I do this just so I can get more practice of going straight into color with an image and then seeing how it turns out. Um, a lot of people like to go black and white and then add in splashes of color and then go on from there. Uh, by all means do that. Um, in other images that I've done I've gone into black and white. Um, I actually do that a lot too when I don't know what what colors I want to use. You know black and white is probably the best way to go when you're starting out 
and your color theory is not really as good. I'm not saying mine is great, but you know, this is just a uh, practice for me. Um, and this other image I've done, it's called the passing, which you can see in my uh, my blog. Uh, I started off with black and white, and then went into color with some overlay layers. It gives a different effect, a different feel, but you know, they both work well. I say whatever works for you, do it. Alright, so now I'm making these rocks stand out a lot more. I in these darker values, giving more of a contrast to them. Now these rocks actually have like sort of a beef onto them. They feel a lot more heavy. Um, yeah, when I'm doing my images, I kind of get a lot of influence on cartoons. Um, when I was young, I, I loved cartoons. I still love cartoons. So, a lot of images that you see of mine have that kind of influence on them. I'm not really a photorealistic guy, but, you know, that's something else that I need to learn, too. Um, using a lot of textures, too, but, you know, I like coloring with, uh... I like doing this cartoony style. And I'm uh, adjusting the roof. Adding a darker value of green. As you can see on some of the rocks, I also added a slight reflection of the sky, the blue little tints on there. Um, you know, these are really big rocks, so they should be reflecting the sky. And blue is actually a really reflective color, so. Alright, now I decided what I wanted to do on this side. I'm going to add in like this bonsai type of tree. Using again this uh, the tree brushes that I found, just adding these splashes of green. And the chalk brush once again to add like little variations of leaves. Um, I find nature to be one of the my most favorite things to paint it's just so peaceful um, it's just really fun to do and you get really great effects when you get really good at it um, another thing f for beginners if you're watching um, yeah, do a lot of life drawing a lot of you know, just painting from life. It really adds uh, another mix to your your actual uh, your pieces. Um, there goes again one of the techniques that I had done in the first video is adding an overlay layer of uh, a gradient color. This time I decided to choose a blue and an orange. As you can see, I just turned it off and now I turned it back on and I'm adjusting it. You know, it just adds in this another dynamic light that you can use. Um, I have it on a separate layer so the only thing that's wrong with it when you do it um, when you try to color pick and use the color on a layer that's underneath that actual layer uh, the colors get obscured so you want to kind of have use that later on late inside your uh, your painting. So as you can see it's turned off for now I'm going to bring it back in later. Uh, giving this rock a little uh, crazier silhouette and I'm going in and uh, adding color variation to those trees in the bottom add adding rocks in there and reflections and just little different colors these little different color variations add a lot to your piece um, the best thing to do there goes 
well actually as you can see that layer was on but uh, like I was saying before uh, the best thing to do is to really push your uh, your darks and your lights you know just add a lot of contrast to your images like in those shrubs right there I have really a lot of different darks but then I started adding those splashes of yellow it really brings out like a flavor or a color to your image um, I'm not done with putting in the colors just yet but I'm gonna start adding in some cracks into these rocks here's a cloud image I had found um, what I'm not doing what I'm doing here is adding it in as an overlay layer and erasing out the parts that I don't need for now now I'm adding in it again flipping it erasing some of the image that I don't need you know, adding textures in your image just makes this uh, gives it more grit and it actually adds a lot of detail to your pieces I use it sparingly some people use it a lot um, it's really good to add textures into your image it gives it a more polished feel um, and I'm still learning how to use it you know to a greater advantage but right here the the clouds give a more dynamic uh, feel to the whole piece and I'm going in again with the the layer turned on this time I'm pretty sure I flattened the image and um, using a chalk brush you know just giving them some more clouds with the chalk brush and this is the next time I actually zoomed in this close into the image I'm uh, detailing this cross path adding the darks and lights where I see fit I kind of give that bird a little face, uh, an eye. Just give him, uh, you know, like he's looking. Uh, this is uh, one of the last things that did. I wasn't really planning on adding a person here, but I think it works perfectly with the actual image, and it's going to tell a story in a bit, too. You always want to even if you start off with something that you don't have any idea what you're doing you want to try to make sure that your paintings tell a story um, you know so your readers can not your readers your viewers can connect to it you know so um, trying to tell a visual story is very important in art and you know I try to put it in every piece I can so I'm gonna have this woman on top of here and I'm gonna have these three other ones carrying this flag as if they're passing it off to her or this is their temple that they go to either one you know whatever whatever comes out of your mind or whatever you get from it I try to think uh, maybe they're some type of monks and these three had gone off on a journey and now they're coming back and this is the way that they signify that they're coming back with this huge flag. You know, monks would normally be on some type of uh, really cool looking building. You know, I try to get that feeling in there. And monks are normally connected to nature, so I wanted, you know, it kind of fits in with the whole theme. With the bird nature house. Uh, there goes me flipping the image again uh, just seeing how, how it works on this side um, another thing that I had learned actually watching videos online um, this one guy, I can't remember his name but he's a really excellent teacher you can find him under my uh, subscriptions and uh, friends list um, yeah I can't remember his name, I'll write it in the comment box but um what he said was you know want to make everything count every line you know if, if you draw a line don't scribble over it just keep it keep it there and make sure like most of your lines are um, confident you know and I try to put that in my pieces you know people can tell if your lines are not confident or really confident just the way that it looks from the scribbles or the really apparent lines so you know that's one thing to keep in mind Uh, it goes to me adding in um, some birds.
birds are trying to add in some birds. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of, like, John Woo films and stuff like that, too. Where, you know, you have, like, the birds coming out, doves flying in every direction in an action sequence. I've always found that cool. And, you know, I try to incorporate some of that stuff in my, uh, my actual drawings. So this one's coming to an end. Um, this piece has thus been updated since making this video so if you want to check out my blog um side messiah arts at tumblr dot com or side messiah arts dot tumblr dot com actually um you can see the updated image with um uh, and i hope you guys enjoyed this video i enjoyed making it for you and there's much more to come again check out my blog and you know see you next time